to summarize what the two kinds of faults we've talked about are, we've got the segmentation faults that really should never happen. If they happen in a C program or a C++ program or assembly program that you're writing, that probably means it's a bug in your code. If they happen in a Rust program or a Java program, that means there's a bug in the compiler or the runtime system. They should never happen. Page faults happen all the time. Right? And what you saw from Michael's demo that when he set the number to zero, you're seeing the number of page faults that it takes to get a program to start running. It's not even doing anything. Right? And for C, he was seeing about 150 to, to start running. For Rust, it was, it was like 500, I think. And for Python, it was over 1,000 or something. That's just what it takes to start any program. You're never going to get less than that if you're writing your programs in those languages in the standard runtime. Now, these are minor page faults, so they're not necessarily that expensive. They're, at least, they're mostly going to be minor page faults. But page faults happen all the time, where all the time means every you know, 10 to 20 million instructions or every few hundred million instructions. Cost of a, a page fault is probably, it should be a lot, actually. So the cost of a page fault, we still have to do a context switch because we have to get back to the operating system kernel to handle it. So it's costing tens of millions of instructions in time. So they shouldn't happen every million or so instructions, but every hundred million or, or several hundred million, it's okay if you have a page fault. So would it be reasonable to have a challenge to generate a specific number of seg faults? Would that be reasonable, either impossible or trivial easy? So what happens after, right? So the fact that you can keep running afterwards is important, right? So if you couldn't keep running, but you can have a handler to catch a seg fault. So what the operating system will do when your program generates a seg fault, it's not going to let you access that memory. But if it will look, if there's a signal handler that handles the seg fault, this is just like the signal handler for handling interrupts that you're adding for pump set two, it will jump to that code. So you can certainly have code, have a program that after a seg fault handles that seg fault and keeps running. So if it weren't for that, yeah, you could only have one because you can't continue with the code that tried to access that page. But you can have a handler. Let's, let's assume we have a handler. How, many, how hard is it to generate a program that can generate, say, 4,000 seg faults? Exactly, yes. Excellent answer, yeah. So if you're programming in C, it's trivial. Right? All you would have to do, right, the easiest way to generate a seg fault in C is to have a, a static string so why does that generate a seg fault? Um, not quite, no. So this would be perfectly OK. Right? It would be per perfectly OK to do something like this. So that value is valid. valid right? The literal string, oh, I should put double quotes around it. We can certainly access characters from a, a literal string. So why does this give me a seg fault? Yeah. OK, good. Yeah. So. When we have a string literal, right, this is being stored on some page in memory. We've got the string literal high. That's where S is pointing, going through the page table. And that page table, that page is a read-only page. It's not writable. So one of the flags we can have in the page table, right, one of the bits there says, is this page accessible? But we can also have pages that are readable but not writable. The page where the C compiler stores a literal is readable but not writable. If we try to write to it, like this instruction does, we'll get a seg fault. That's a memory protection error to try to write to a page that's only readable. So it's easy to generate our seg faults and know that we're generating them in a predictable way, unlike that previous code that I showed you where it was hard to guess when the first seg fault would happen. And if we want to generate 4,000 of them, well, we just have a loop that does this 4,000 times. We still need a seg fault handler so the program keeps ex executing. But once we've done that, it's trivial to get exactly the number of seg faults we want. And there's no good reason that you would want a particular number of seg faults, but you could do it if you wanted to. In C, it's trivial. In Rust, it should be impossible, although it's pretty easy to find things that cause seg faults in Rust, at least the current version of Rust. But you can't have a handler for it. I, well, actually, you probably can handle it. So it probably actually is a little tougher in Rust because you've got to find a bug in the Rust compiler that reliably produces a seg fault. But at least in the 0.9 version, that's not that hard to do.